Hello, this is Kairasis, and in this WoW Mechanics video, we will be talking about attack avoidance calculations, specifically about how they are handled for attacks made against the player character. The game doesn't do a good job of advertising what is going on under the hood with some of these game mechanics, and there are some weird aspects associated with them as well that are not easy to pick up on. As such, the goal of this video is to provide a method of learning what is going on with attack points mechanics in the current expansion of the game, since these mechanics have changed a few times over the game's life. In particular, we will be talking about parry mechanics, dodge mechanics, mischance, and combined attack avoidance. Before we take a look at the parry formula, there are three pieces of information to keep in mind that are related to parry and the different tanking specializations. 1. Only Strength Tanks gain parry rating from Strength, which includes Death Knights, Warriors, and Paladins. 2. These same Strength Tanks, as well as Vengeance Demon Hunters, gain parry rating from Critical Strike rating. Finally, Guardian Druids can't parry attacks at all, so nothing in any of the following parry formulas will apply to Guardian Druids. With this in mind, let us take a look at the overall parry rate formula, which has five terms in particular we are concerned about. The first two terms are relatively straightforward. Every tank specialization other than druids is given a baseline of 3% parry, regardless of any other effects. And, for strength tanks in particular, base strength is converted into parry percentage based on a fixed variable called P. Base strength is the amount of strength you have when you have no gear equipped and are affected by no spell or talent effects. This value also has small variations depending on your exact race and class, though these are generally small. Meanwhile, as of patch 10.1.7, P is equal to around 644, so every 644 base strength will provide around 1% parry. For better or worse, the third term is going to require some more explanation, and we will start by talking about raw parry percentage, because raw parry percentage also has its own formula. In short, raw parry percentage is the unadjusted parry contribution the character gains from their bonus strength and parry rating based on separate conversion rates. Bonus strength is just your total character strength after subtracting base strength from it, while parry rating is 99% of the time equal to critical strike rating for all applicable tank specializations. Some miscellaneous sources of parry rating do exist that are not related to critical strike rating, but they are extremely rare in the more modern expansions of this game. It is also important to note that there are many critical strike effects that explicitly give you critical strike chance instead of critical strike rating, which doesn't provide any parry change at all. As we said before, only strength tanks gain both of these contributions, while demon hunters only gain contributions from the parry rating portion being provided by their critical strike. F furthermore, Looking at the raw parry formula, the fixed variable P has the exact same value it had in the overall parry formula when converting strength into raw parry. While parry rating is converted into raw parry with the fixed variable D, which currently equals 200. Anytime you see any of these variables show up in these formulas, they will always have the same value no matter what calculation they are being used in, though sometimes there are differences based on tank specialization. That being said, if you are watching this video in any expansion after Dragonflight, the values associated with these variables have probably changed. In any case, let us move back to the main formula. The main thing to note with raw parry is that the variables V and H are effectively applying diminishing returns to how much actual parry the raw parry will turn into. Where the variable V has a value of 0.02 for demon hunters and 0.01 for all other tanking specializations. Meanwhile, the variable H is equal to 1 over 0.02. 97 for druids and 1 over 0 0.94 for everyone else. 
While druids don't have the ability to parry, you will see later that the dodge formulas will use all of these same variables. Before we talk about why demon hunters and druids have different constant values, I want to ex quickly explain how the dimension return system is working here for most other tank specializations. In some of my older mechanics videos, I went over a concept called linear or natural diminishing returns, which talked about how most positive multipliers naturally diminish over time the more of them you have. If we took increased damage from versatility as an example, each 1% increase in the multiplier would result in a smaller and smaller relative increase as the multiplier gets larger as can be seen from the case starting with a 0% versatility modifier and a case starting with a 10% versatility modifier as shown on the screen. This effect can also be seen in the following graph for a wide range of versatility values, which I will leave up for a few seconds before moving on. In any case, the same relationship can also be seen in a number of defensive mechanics, such as with physical damage reduction from armor when we are looking at how it affects our physical effective health as a result of the physical damage reduction you are getting from the armor rating itself. And for the purposes of this current video, we see a very similar relationship when we look at the parry percentage being provided by raw parry at least with regards to parryable physical effective health. With most tank specializations, your effective parry from raw parry sources mirrors linear diminishing returns, assuming you are gaining exactly 3% of parry from the other terms in the overall equation. As such, your first percentage of raw parry won't give you 1% of actual parry, and would, instead, increase your average parryable physical effective health from 103% to 104%, assuming you actually did have 3% parry from all other parry terms combined. That being said, if you have more than 3% parry from other sources, your actual diminishing returns will be less than linear, while the opposite is also true. And, while we haven't talked about them yet in detail, dodge and miss chances can be a factor as well, but we will get to that soon enough. So, circling back to the general parry equation, why do demon hunters and druids have different constants for V and H? As you will eventually see, demon hunters are capable of gaining both raw parry and raw dodge percentage, which are on separate but identical diminishing return systems. However, despite being on separate diminishing return systems, total attack avoidance is the sum of total dodge and total parry, as well as mischance. So, under normal circumstances, a split of raw dodge and raw parry would provide more total attack avoidance than you would gain from having the combined amount of raw percentage in only one or the other avoidance stats. The larger value of V for Demon Hunters accounts for this and makes it so that an optimal mix of raw parry and raw dodge would result in an equivalent amount of attack avoidance as that combined amount of raw percentage being applied to only one of these forms of attack avoidance on any of the other non-Druid tank specializations. So, what about Guardian Druids? While the standard values assume that you are gaining 3% total attack avoidance from sources other than raw parry and raw dodge for the purposes of linear diminishing returns, the modified value of H tweaks the diminishing returns formula to assume that you are only gaining around 1.5% total attack avoidance from these sources. So their raw attack avoidance is not diminished as much as the other tanks. This is likely due to the fact that druids cannot parry, and as such, they don't gain the baseline 3% parry rate that all other tanks received. And, if you are curious why the diminishing returns is only adjusted by 1.5% for missing out on a baseline 3% parry, you are about to find out. The fourth term in this equation deals with the level difference adjustment, where level difference is the player level minus the enemy level. For any endgame content, this value ends up being some number between 0 and negative 3. Normal trash mobs are generally the same level as you, making this term 0. 
Trash enemies immune to crowd control are generally one level higher than you, which starts to impose a penalty, which gets larger with dungeon bosses that are usually two levels higher than you, and raid bosses that are usually three levels higher than you. So, for every level higher the enemy is from you, the final parry percentage will be reduced by 1.5%. That being said, it is impossible for you to have less than 0% effect parry, or less than 0% of any attack is avoided stats for that matter. As for the final term, it is just there to mention that most buff and debuff effects that affect parry rates are either giving you or taking away a fixed percentage of parry and they are not dealing with any form of diminishing returns at all, unless we are talking about buffs that are explicitly giving you parry rating as opposed to parry chance, which are not common in the more common expansions of the game. For some example buff effects, we have Dancing Rune Weapon for Blood Death Knights, and Demon Spikes for Vengeance, De Vengeance Demon Hunters. Now that we've explained parry, how do things work with dodge? Just like for parry, we'll begin by outlining some general information relating to the specific tank specializations when it comes to dodge. 1. Only agility tanks gain dodge from agility, in a similar fashion to how strength tanks gain parry from strength. 2. Only guardian druids gain dodge from critical strike. Demon hunters are already getting parry from critical strike, and monks have a unique dodge mechanic that is based around their mastery rating, which is not a system that we will be covering in this video. So, with those disclaimers up front, let us look at the relevant dodge formulas, while also looking at the corresponding parry formulas that we have just reviewed. I'm aware that this is a big mess of text you put on the screen at once, but there's only one main takeaway I'm trying to communicate here, which is that parry and dodge formulas exactly mirror each other if you just swap strength with agility and parry with dodge. All of the previously defined coefficients are exactly the same value in both formulas for your given tank spec, and there are only a few additional details worth noting. One, which is more gameplay related, dodge generally affects a wider range of incoming attacks than parry, for whatever reason with the biggest difference probably being the fact that you can usually dodge ranged physical attacks while you can almost never parry them. Beyond that, an example of a dodge buff effect are the bonuses associated with Elusive Brawler on Brewmaster Monks. Next, we are going to talk about Mischance, which is only a minor mechanic in the current state of the game relative to dodge and parry. Again, we are going to show the miss formula alongside the parry formulas just to give them some more context. And, while a lot of the terms from the parry formula are now gone, the terms that are included in the miss chance formula are terms that are shared with the parry formula. So we are left with a base 3% miss chance that is affected by a level difference adjustment. As such, dungeons and raid bosses generally have no chance to miss players. With all of the pieces assembled, we can finally talk about overall attack avoidance. After they are all independently calculated, parry, dodge, and miss all interact with each other in an additive fashion. So, what are the main implications of this? The first implication of this is that attack avoidance effects are marginally stronger when fighting Mythic Plus Trash compared to Mythic Plus bosses and raid bosses. Ignoring Druids for a second, each tank gets a base 3% parry, dodge, and mischance, so as long as you are fighting trash enemies, you are going to maintain at least half of those base rates against incoming attacks, which increases the marginal effectiveness of additional parry and dodge. It won't be a huge difference in effectiveness, but it is a difference nonetheless. The second main implication continues where we left off when talking about Vengeance Demon Hunters. While both parry and dodge ratings have something similar to a linear diminishing return system, it is important to note that they each operate on their own diminishing return systems, while additively combining for overall attack avoidance. So, while your marginal parry benefits may go down the more parry rating you have, increasing parry rating is actually increasing the effectiveness of additional dodge rating, and vice versa, should you have a method of obtaining both. 
That being said, druids can't parry and can only dodge, so this isn't relative, relevant to them at all. So the most common case for this is with demon hunters with regards to critical strike, since agility levels aren't too customizable. If your levels of raw dodge are greater than your levels of raw parry on a demon hunter, critical strike will result in a larger than normal relative gain to total attack avoidance, though the opposite situation will be true with too much critical strike rating. And while this situation is much rarer, sometimes the other four tanks can benefit from rare effects that provide ratings that they don't normally have access to. The main historical example of this happening is in the second half of the Battle for Azeroth expansion with the pocket-sized computational device trinket, which was a customizable trinket depending on what you put in for its sockets. One of the trinket effects you'd be able to gain was called Trajectory Analysis, which gave you a stacking dodge rating buff whenever you took physical damage up to 99 stacks, that as long as you kept taking physical damage at least once every 6 seconds, you could maintain indefinitely. While the numbers shown are no longer representative of how much rating it gave back during that expansion, full stacks used to be able to give you nearly 30% dodge on parry tanks, even after the dodge rating was diminished which, when combined with an existing parry rate of 20% or more from your strength and critical strike rating, was extremely strong for a defensive trinket effect in Mythic Plus against avoidable attacks. On its own, it could reduce around a third of remaining avoidable attacks at full stacks, and even taking into consideration that you couldn't maintain full stacks all the time, only a fraction of this trinket effect was needed to justify using the trinket. So, while unique sources of dodge and parry rating are rare, it is something to keep an eye out for, since they tend to be disproportionately strong on tanks that are not normally able to acquire these types of ratings. In conclusion, we talked about the mechanics and calculations associated with parry, dodge, and mischance. We discussed specific differences each tank specialization has with these attack avoidance stats. We reviewed how these chances combine into overall attack avoidance, and we looked into the implications of these overall mechanics. As always, feel free to stop by the channel Discord if you want to talk about Blood DK theory crafting. If you'd like a Mythic Plus log review, or if you have Mythic Plus related questions. The channel Discord information, as well as my personal Discord contact information, is in the video description below. Let me know what you think about attack avoidance mechanics in the comments, and if you want to make it easier for other people to find this content, feel free to upvote the video and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, good luck and have fun.